All right, welcome back to the Rust Wrangler. As you can see here, we have a beautiful 1965 Cadillac Coupe de Ville. I've been hanging on to this one for a while. I bought it a while back. This is a car I've been wanting for a long time. This is one I plan on keeping. It's been off the road for about 15 years now. We're gonna see if we can get it running. I think our first order of operation is gonna to be to try to get this thing in the garage here. Due to the fact that uh, we're at the time of year where when you go to work in the morning it's dark out and when you get home at night after work it's uh, dark out again so that way I can uh, be in the light to work uh, as well as it's pretty wet around here this time of year so uh, once I get it inside we'll take a close look at everything on this car this thing is just awesome we're gonna find out if the tires hold air I know it did when I picked it up but that's been about a year now hopefully they do and we'll get it rolled inside Well, that gave the old DeWalt air compressor a real workout, but all four tires are holding air, so let's see if we can get this thing pushed inside. Alright, so the Cadillac's inside now, as you can see. It's going to be a little nicer to work on it in here. It's been a couple days now, actually, and the tires are all flat again. I am going to have to get some new tires on there, but uh, I don't have them yet. For now, I think what I want to do is I want to go over this whole thing with you guys. And then uh, I think what I'd like to do is try to start digging into the motor and see if we can't get this thing running. Man, that is a beautiful car. To start with, let's go ahead and go over the whole body here. Look how straight this thing is. I think the only ding I actually saw, and maybe we'll find more as we go around, is right about here-ish. There's a little bit, little bit of a ding. Uh, you can only really see it in the light. But other than that, this thing is straight as an arrow. Even the trim, the trim's all lining up nice and straight. Uh, I also might add that uh, almost all the trim is on this thing still. It's missing, uh, obviously there's a little snafu right up here. I'll have to get a new one of these. Might have to do a little straightening up right there. No biggie. And the grill also has a little bit of a, a ding in it there. But other than that, most of the stuff, oh, and I also think there's supposed to be a trim piece on the bottom of the hood. So I'm gonna have to keep my eyes open for something like that. Um, I believe there's supposed to be a piece of trim along the wheel the wheel well here so then we got that and as you can see it's black underneath where that trim was i'll show you guys here in a little bit i don't know if this thing was originally white um yeah based off of the vin the vin tag it looks like it may have originally been black hopefully somebody will be able to help me out there but we'll take a look at that here in a few so you can see all the trim around the windows is here. Trim along the sides. And the rear window trim is gone. Somebody siliconed around it, but the glass is all perfect. You can see that some of this paint has just been flaking off like crazy. And then you got the other side here, also just straight as an arrow. Super nice. And then uh, down below on the quarters, things look pretty good down here. I'm gonna show you, there's a couple spots where we look like we have a little bit of rust through. Nothing right here. So it looks like we're getting some bubbling down here, maybe Maybe a little rot down there, I'm not sure. I gotta dig in a little farther. That don't look great, but we'll see about fixing that up. And then, oh, I think there was a little spot here I was gonna show you. You can see we got a little hole here. That's kind of a bummer. And then you can see the paint's kind of bubbling up a little bit. 
a lot of this is just rust, uh, like a rusty surface. You know, this paint is just chipping off like crazy, especially on the roof here. Um, quarters down here. You can see uh, it looks pretty solid there. This side looks pretty decent. And then in the back, not bad at all. And back here as well, really nice. And then I think the only other spot where I think I had a, a little bit of a, it looks like might be a little bit of an issue with the metal is right here. So I'd like to get this thing kind of covered up and make sure it can handle the weather if I have to put it back outside. Oh, and there is a little bit of a, uh, a hole in the metal right here. So it's starting to rot away there. Also the back here, I don't have a ton of room back here, but look at the butt on that. He must work out. The back bumper and all the chrome back here, everything is straight, it's all there. It looks great. Other than that, this is just a sweet car. Let's go ahead and take a peek inside. And you can see we're gonna need a few parts in here. You got this piece missing for that, for the handle. Other than that, both door cards are decent. Um, it does smell pretty musty in here. You got back here, looks like the speakers are missing. Uh, but all the seats are, are he, all the seats are here and um, you got the headliner with a little bit of mold growing on it. But it's all there and it actually doesn't look too bad. And then you got the dash. Oh, and then I was going to show you this here too. This uh, door bracket kind of holds the door up. That, this side here is looking a little rotted. The other side looks pretty good. But uh, not sure what that is. A little switch put in there. Really cool dash. We got wiper controls. A light switch right here. What is this? It says uh, 24,000 miles. I'm not sure if that would be 124. I guess uh, based off the pedals and how they look, the pedals look pretty good actually. There's not a lot of wear on those. I suppose it could be 24,000, but who knows, you know? So you have, uh, it looks like we're missing a radio. That's kind of a bummer. I didn't really notice that earlier on. Another little switch right here. I'm not sure what that's for. You got your ashtrays. His and hers. And then the uh, glove compartment there, they put it right in the middle so that way you got a lot of leg room over on the passenger side. That's pretty cool. There's a ton of leg room over there. That's awesome. The old steering wheel here, pretty neat. You got the uh, horn on the sides here. You can see there, there's been some weather in here for sure. Seats are a little worn. I'll probably have to get new foam in here at some point. And then I'd like to get these seats recovered also at some point. Looks like this would have had electric seats. Let's hope those work. I'm not sure. I doubt, highly doubt they would with, uh, you know, the looks of... How much moisture might have gotten in here, but you never know. As far as the floors, they feel solid, but 
I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jack this thing off the ground a little bit and we'll roll underneath and see see what the what it looks like underneath. But all in all, just a great looking car. Let me go grab the keys and then uh, we'll take a look under the in the trunk. And and after that, we'll take a peek under the hood. Another little thing I noticed here was right in the front corners of, of the windshield here, there's uh, little blue lights. I'm not sure what those are for. There's one on this side. And then there's also one on the passenger side here. I'm not sure if that was a factory deal or if somebody else put that in, but uh, kind of funky little deal. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look in this trunk. The old Cadillac emblem flips out of the way there. All right. Now, the underside of this trunk lid is kind of a white creamy color. So that kind of makes me wonder about the color again, but look at that. Jacking instructions. That is neat. So in the trunk here, not great lighting back here. Sorry about that, but uh, looks like we got a little, an extra oil filter here that never got used. And a little gas can, a couple tools. Looks like there's a set of, oh, I don't know if that is good news. There's a water pump there. Um, and then a set of plug wires or something that looked like they were probably new and never installed. Uh, other than that, there's not much back here. I'm going to see if I can get this carpet out of the way and see how the metal looks. It's a little damp, which is not nice. I don't like that, but it actually all feels pretty solid. There's a rubber mat here. Let me see get this out of the way a little more it's kind of hard to see back here but everything looks pretty solid actually definitely uh want to maybe leave it open and let it dry out a bit because there is some some rust but it doesn't seem like there's any holes so that's nice i'm noticing here too this is a bummer but it's looking pretty rusty right along this edge here. You can see. Um, yeah, yeah, this lip here looks pretty rusty. I'll probably have to try to replace that with new metal. The underside of this trunk lid looks really nice. So anyways, I'm going to leave that open for now. Let's go ahead and go to the front and uh, peek under the hood. Now I threw that battery in there, that was not in there before, but it looks like our insulation is hanging down here. I'm gonna probably just pull that off. <clears throat> it's a little bit of a bummer. This thing didn't have air cleaner on it and it looks like there's a bunch of junk in the car up there. So I'm definitely gonna pull that off to clean it out before I crack, uh, the throttle on it or anything you can see there's a few tools laying up here some brake fluid hopefully that doesn't mean the brakes are not working another thing we'll find out soon enough it looks like the ac has been pulled off i believe that this was probably part of the ac system kind of looks like a couple extra wires were ran through here for the most part though, it looks like everything's here. I believe uh, these had a 429 motor in them and a turbo 400 transmission. The guy that I got it from, he said 
that this thing was sitting with the hood partially open at a, a buddy's shop for a while and then he ended up going to pick it up and it sat in his yard. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing, but we're fixing to find out here real soon, I suppose. Now since this uh, insulation is looking pretty ragged, ragged anyways, uh, I think I'm just going to rip it off of here. And, uh, and then we'll go ahead and check some fluids. Not sure. Oh man. I'm going to go ahead and throw a shirt over that carburetor for now. Just because there's going to be a lot of junk and I don't need any more junk in there. I know that. So go ahead and pull this thing off of here and then we'll check uh, see what our oil and transmission fluid looks like okay so that's out the inside of the trunk was white but the bottom of the hood looks like it was black. I'm not sure what color this thing would have been. I'll show you guys that VIN tag here in just a few, but let's go ahead and quick check our, our fluids. Okay, that's good news. There's oil on the dipstick um, in a pretty good, at a pretty good level, and it uh, doesn't look like the motor's full of water, so that is a huge bonus. Let's just go ahead and double check that one more time here. Yeah, not bad. Transmission fluid. It's way tough down here. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like and smells like. Oh, well, it's red. Smells really burnt but uh, we'll have to cross that bridge when we get to that point we got a lot of work to do before we get to the transmission test so let's see if we got any gears so let's start uh, actually let me go ahead and check what if there's cooling in here a minute Hello. I don't see any coolant. Okay. Now I'm gonna start digging into this thing, but before we before we do, I think I'm gonna go ahead and quickly jack this thing up and let's take a look underneath this car and see what kind of rust problems we got down there. Almost forgot I was gonna show everybody the VIN tag here. I don't know where if I can get at a good angle here. So, uh, paint, I believe this would be the number for the paint, the 10, and 10 is black uh, when I look it up online. So, but I believe, based off of that, that this car should be black. I kind of like the white. Uh, if anybody has any info on that, I'd love to hear it down in the comments because uh, I, I'm not really sure. Uh, I kind of think with a car like this, I would like to bring it back to its original color. Okay, let's like take a look underneath this thing. I got it on jack stands here. <clears throat> I got a light that, uh, an underhood type deal light that I can use uh, to look underneath there. And I suppose I could have used that in the trunk too, which maybe we could go take another look at, look at. but let's see what underneath this thing looks like it looks like we got some exhaust that was done oh some flow masters nice there's a lot of surface rust but the floor pans actually look solid you got you know some crusty crustiness here but that's to be expected it looks like this thing was coated on the bottom, so let me drag the light over here a little bit. 
It's a little soft here, but it might just be the coating. This don't look bad at all. It actually looks pretty darn good. That's awesome. Yeah, this would be the footwell for the you know, right behind the driver's seat. That also looks pretty solid. Nice. The frame also had the coating, it looks like. You can see the, some of the coatings crusting off, but I don't see any uh, any of the metal eating away. So let's uh, roll over to the other side here quick and see what that side looks like. Okay, so passenger side as well looks pretty solid. So real quick, I just wanted to take another quick peek back here now that I got a light. You can see we got some rust, uh, surface rust back here. But no real rust through. And then uh, under this here, I'm not seeing any crazy amount of rust. But definitely need to dry this thing out. I might want to actually take these things out of here because uh, it's probably holding moisture underneath it. Yeah, it's a little rustier on this side. Yeah. Yeah, I'll probably pull those out. I like to avoid having the rust go any farther. So, anywho, there's that. Okay, so before I dive into uh, just trying to get this thing to roll over for me, I got new plugs for this thing anyways, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull these old ones out, and take a look at them, and uh, I think I'm gonna feel a little better about things if I pour some Marvel Mystery Oil down the cylinders there. So, I think we'll just go ahead and pull these out. That one wasn't in there real tight. And that looks pretty good. It's a uh, little city black, but dry and uh, nothing crazy on it. So, that one looks good too. Another one looks good. Okay, a little bit of the same. Still dry, but the, the threads are a little rusty on that one. Nothing to really be concerned about yet. All right, we'll get the other side here. I'm gonna go ahead and just bang this out a minute and uh, we'll get some oil down in the cylinders just to be on the safe side. I, haven't, I don't know how good or bad these motors are. This 429. Okay. And that one's also looking the same as the other side, so that's good. I've been able to crack most of these just the one or two turns, and then I can get them out by, by hand, so that's kind of a good sign as well. Well, not, not bad. The threads are a little rusty, but, but the ends dry. Okay. They all look about the same. Nothing too concerning. I'll go ahead and see if I can... Get one here. It's gonna. There we go. Yeah, they all look pretty much just about like that. Like I said, I'm just gonna throw a little mist oil down these holes, and then uh, I might let it sit for a few before I actually uh, dive into it. So let's go ahead and do that. Got the old flex hose funnel here. Just to hopefully loop things up and uh, make sure we don't scuff anything in the cylinders. Like I said, I'm wanting to, I'm wanting to hang on to this car, so. Based off of the, uh, the looks of the spark plugs, I would imagine this thing would turn over just fine. So, I don't really feel like I need to let this thing sit for crazy long. We'll let it kind of sit for a sec and then and then we'll try to give it a spin. All right, so this thing's been sitting for a while now. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can't grab onto the fan here. And if I can turn it over that way. Uh, oh, no, it's just spinning the belts. Which I 
They're pretty rusty. Or is it? Turn it over to till. Oh, it is turned it over. Nice. It's pretty dark down there, as you can see, but it's totally turning over. Nice, that's awesome. Okay, so I should start seeing some fluid squirting out here. So, okay. So it's turned over probably a good two rotations now. Uh, that's, that's fantastic. I think I kind of like to see if the if I hooked it up to power, if the starter would turn it, but I'm a little afraid. I don't want to get anything down in here um, with there being so much junk in the carb. I may go ahead and just pull that off first before I do anything else. I want to make sure I don't get anything in this motor. So um, then I can make sure nothing actually got down in there. Uh, I'll clean it out, throw it back on, hopefully. Well, I'm getting ready to pull this carb off, and as you can see, uh, after working in the dark and not using my light all that time, I now decided I would put my little light up here. And it's actually uh, pretty nice. I'm not sure why I don't use it more, but it's probably because I don't think before I do things, I guess. So let's go ahead and get this thing off of here and see if we can uh, make sure nothing got down in the intake there. Well, I'll never find that one again. All right, and there she is. There's no junk uh, down here uh, in the intake. So that's, uh, that's a good sign. I'm gonna go ahead and shop back around this here, and then I'll start uh, cleaning up that carb. Okay, so we got the carb out here. You can see there's a, a snail shell down in there. I think the first thing I want to do is make sure everything moves freely in this thing. So it looks like we're moving freely on the primaries here. But the secondary looks like it's seized. I don't know if I can break that free. I'm gonna to wanna to probably spray the spray some WD down in there and uh, make sure everything's moving freely. So I'm just gonna go ahead and douche everything here. And from there, once once everything's once everything's moving around, then I'll start just cleaning things up, making sure all the passages are clear, and then uh, once I know that, I don't have a rebuild kit for this thing, so once everything's kind of cleaned up and, and decent, I'll throw it back on. Uh, we'll give it a whirl. I'll probably rebuild this thing down the road and go from there. But we'll start with that. So I finally got the uh, secondaries to break free. And uh, they're looking pretty, pretty nasty in there. There's a lot of rust and crud built up in there so everything's free now I think I could probably start going ahead, going ahead and just cleaning things up and after I clean it up I'm just gonna throw it back on and and we'll continue the process of trying to get the motor running all right so I got this thing cleaned up enough where we're not going to be getting any junk in the motor here so let's go ahead and throw her back on and uh, get everything hooked back up I'd like to try to do like a full restoration on this car, which uh, is going to be, it's going to take a decent amount of time to do probably because there's a lot of real estate on this thing. So for now, we'll get this thing back on here and see what we're working with. Let's go ahead and hook everything back up. Okay, and there we have it. Carbs back on, looking pretty good.
And uh, let me see about replacing this little, little fuel filter here. Actually, I guess before I mess with any of the fuel stuff, uh, we could probably hook a battery up and see if all the electrical is uh, intact, I suppose you could say. And also see if it turns over with the key. So <clears throat> let me go ahead and throw this on here. No sparks. Let's go see if we have power in this. Yeah, here. Okay, first key test right here with the battery hooked up. Nothing on the dash. Nothing with the key turn to uh, ignition. Um, oh, I see some lights up front. Let's go see what we got for lights up here. All right, okay, we got a real dim light over here. So we do have power. So now that we know we have power in this thing, let's see what else works in here. I hear a blinker going on that side, but no lights over there. The back's blinking. This side works. Oh, nice, that is super cool. I'm gonna show you guys this here in a minute. So you got that little indicator on the uh, trim up there, right towards the front of the fender. That's sweet. That's Cadillac for you. All right, let's see what else we got. We got wipers. Wipers work. And they park themselves, that's pretty neat. Uh, let's see if we got windows. No windows. Okay. All right, so this one switch right here is uh, the blower for the heater. And that works, that's pretty, that's pretty nice. I have no idea what this little switch would be. Okay, um, do I have Dash lights. They don't look like it. Alright, we'll deal with that later. Um, okay, so heater controls right here. Horn? No horn. That's kind of a bummer. Something else I'll have to deal with later. All right, well, at least we know what works and what doesn't now. We can start knocking some stuff off the list. I never did check if the tail lights are working. It looks like we got tail lights, that's pretty cool. License plate light, both tail lights are working, that's awesome. It's in, it's in park, so, um, Oh, okay. So, must be my neutral safety switch, but uh, as you can hear, she's turning over with the key. Nice. Oh, this is awesome. <laughs> I'm going to tackle the spark issue and then we'll start tackling the fuel and I suppose what I could do is I'll throw a little spark tester on the, one of these plug wires or even just a plug I suppose and uh, we'll see if we're getting spark to the plugs and let's see if this thing lights up for us. Alright let me know what you see. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over and see if we're getting spark. <laughs> Okay, so I don't think I see any spark there, or I don't think that little tester's lighting up, so we're going to have to dig into that. 
Okay, so the battery is getting a little weak there. Uh, I threw the jump pack on it. Now, um, I want to test this coil here. And let's see. Let's turn the key on. And with key on, you can see we have power on uh, the hot side of the coil and on the side going to the distributor here. So I believe uh, our coil's probably good. So I think what I'm gonna do is tear the distributor cap off here and see what we're looking at under there. Okay, let's get this cap, pull, cap pulled off here. And see what is going on. All right, it looks like maybe there was a little bit of moisture in there at some point. Let's, oh yeah, all right, you know what? I can really see it. Uh, I'm gonna have to scrub them points. So let's take this rotor off here a minute. And the points, I can already see there's like a green film on the points, so I'm almost willing to bet that's what our, pro our spark problem is here. And at least I'm hoping that's what it is too, because uh, that would be a nice easy fix here. So yeah, there's a bunch of uh, corrosion happening there. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a little piece of sandpaper and let's see if we can't get these things to spark for us. So as you can see on the points there, we've got uh, a nasty green film, definitely gonna be an issue. So all I'm doing here is running a little piece of sandpaper through these points just to clean up the, the surfaces there. And once we do that, we'll give uh, we'll give her another shot and see if we get spark again. So with key on, I should be able to see if I have power here. Uh, yeah, I do. It's just really weak. Seems kind of intermittent, but I am getting some sparks down here and I'm getting power. There we go. Okay, so I'm getting power there. And yeah, we're getting some sparkles when I... Okay, and then I'm gonna just give it a quick squirt. And some brake cleaner. Let that dry off. As soon as that dries off, we'll go ahead and throw our... Uh, Rotor back on there. All right, rotor's back on. Let's throw this cap back on here. And see, see what we get out of this thing. So, rotor and cap are back on. Let's quick throw our spark tester back on here and see if we get a different result. So now that we know we got spark, I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and throw all the spark, new spark plugs in here. And uh, I think at that point we can probably try to dump a little bit of fuel down the throat and see if it fires off for us. All right, so plugs are back in. Uh, I obviously haven't changed out the plug wires yet, but before I do that, I say we just give her a little shot here, see what happens. So I got a little bit of fuel here. Let's at least just see if it uh, fires off for us. Okay, here we go. Come on, honey. So if you're getting a little low on the old battery, even with the jump pack on it, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap the the uh, jump pack for the battery charger, and uh, we'll just make sure that the battery's got enough juice to turn this thing over, and we'll give it another shot.
All right, battery charge is hooked up. Let's throw just a little more fuel down the throat there and, and give it another little shot here. Hopefully she turns over for us. Man, I can't believe it. She actually fired up and there was no, no real funny noises, so that's awesome. figure out fuel delivery to this thing and uh, hopefully we can get her to idle on her own but for now I'm gonna try a little more here got a nice throaty gravel tour with those flow masters awesome pretty good. I might have a little exhaust leak up here, but it's nothing we can't handle. It's getting a little smoky, so I'm going to have to open the garage door here, but uh, it sounds pretty good and uh, seems to be running pretty good too. I'll be honest with you, I was a little worried. This is a relief. I'm happy that it runs and uh, hopefully the transmission is uh, just as sound as the motor seems to be. But this is awesome. Sweet. I was just kind of going over everything after the uh, after getting her started and whatnot, and uh, I realized I totally forgot to unplug the fuel line from the the uh, tank there. I never hooked this up, but we sh we technically should have seen fuel coming out of here if there was any in the system. So I'm wondering if that means my tank's empty which I might want to go check out here. I'm still going to pull that tank down and look in there. I'd like to make sure that it's all a full clean system coming up to the carb here. And then also, uh, I think I'm actually going to pull the valve covers. I'd like to, I think it'll be a good indicator of uh, the condition of the motor on the inside and see how it looks under there. While I was kind of peeking around here, I noticed uh, my steering rag joint here is pretty well shot. I guess you would say. So we're definitely going to need to put a new one of those on. Either way, uh, we've got to dig through all these issues and uh, get this sorted out so we can get this thing on the road. So I'm going to start by going back and checking the uh, fuel tank a second. I'd like to knock on that a minute and uh, see if there's any fuel in it. So let's check that out a sec. All right. So... 
It does sound empty. Sounds pretty hollow. I'm not sure why it would be all the way empty, but I think that's a good thing. Then hopefully uh, we won't be dealing with too many varnish issues or anything, and hopefully the lines will be clean. But uh, let's start pulling that stuff apart. Actually, I'm gonna start by taking the valve covers off a minute. Let's look under there, and then we'll start digging into the fuel system. chipping off of this thing so I want to be careful that I don't let any of that fall in there. Alright, got some little tabs on here. Should come right off here. Nice. That looks good. So there ain't a lot of build up here. Everything looks fairly clean. That's good. That's uh that's nice to see actually. Let's take a little swipe here. No glitter. That's what we like to see. And obviously the oil was circulating. As you can see it was kind of pulling up down here a little bit. Boy, that's awesome. I'm gonna I'm gonna take the other side off too just to check. There we go. Very clean. Awesome. I feel comfortable. I think I'm gonna actually clean these valve covers up a little bit. I feel good just kind of cleaning them up, throwing them back on, and then we continue on on this thing. Well, it's time to dive into the fuel system here. I've already got a few parts off of the front there uh, by the motor, such as the rubber lines and then the, uh, the fuel filter housing. But I wanna pull this tank out. Uh, I already got the rubber lines unhooked from the, the front there. And this thing is massive. I can't believe how big this thing is, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and pull her down. I think I'd feel a lot better if I got a look inside this thing. So let's see what it looks like. Now there's a fair amount of uh, expanding foam above this tank. So I don't know if, uh, if that was factory or if somebody else did that, but I'm guessing somebody else would have done that. But then again, I'm not 100% sure. So I think we're ready. With all this expanding foam, it's just suctioned up to the uh, bed here, or the floor. There we go. Oh boy. Okay, she's slowly coming loose. So, we got the fuel tank out. We've got the fuel filter assembly, which looks like it's a glass bowl. We've got uh, a couple of the other hard lines up from the, on the motor uh, side of things. This is a soft line. I'm going to go get new soft lines so that we can uh, make sure all that's brand new and uh, good to go. So, in here, Obviously, I'll have to replace this little rubber piece for the breather. And I think I'd like to pull the sending unit out and take a look inside this tank. So, there's a bit of uh, rust on top of here. I just hope it's not pinholed and whatnot. So, I'm going to take that off and we'll get a peek inside this thing. Okay, moment of truth. I got my light bulb in the uh, spout there. Sending units out. Let's take a peek inside this thing. Oofta. 
it don't look it looks pretty rusty well i'll probably put a bunch of nuts and bolts in that thing shake it around a bit and uh see if i can't flush it out here we go i'm gonna dump a bunch of nuts in here and uh, i'm gonna throw it in the back of my truck for a couple days and we're just gonna let her ride around in the back of my truck that's not really gonna stick but uh, and hopefully these nuts will just kind of float around in here a bit loosen things up hopefully it cleans it up enough and we can throw it back in the car so there you have it it's in the back of the truck we're gonna let her ride around in here for a couple days and hopefully it cleans it up good enough for us all right so since we're going through the whole process of uh, somewhat cleaning the tank out I'll be waiting on a, uh, a new sending unit and whatnot for this thing so for now just because I'm really itching to drive this car I know this means more work for me you know whatever I'm okay with that so I'm gonna go ahead and, and pull the sock off and uh, let's see if we can uh, put some brake cleaner through here as you can see no brake cleaner comes out of this side apparently this is all plugged up I mean it's plugged up solid and what I'll do is it's just a it's just a line going straight to here I'm just gonna run a bunch of uh, wire through it welding wire whatever I can just to break it all up and I'll flush it out the best I can just so we can get fuel flowing through there it should still be good I did check this with a multimeter it looks like the uh, float should be working so let's go ahead and get this all cleaned out also clean up the fuel fil fuel filter here I have a new a new filter right there we will uh, we'll pull this all apart check it all out I'm gonna go ahead and just fill that thing with brake cleaner here for a little bit and we're gonna kind of get started on this filter bowl let's see what it looks like inside this thing I'm a little scared to pull this apart because I'm sure I'm gonna probably need a new gasket for this too well maybe not and that is a way different filter than what I have before I go ahead and put the new filter on, I'm going to clean this all up, make sure everything's flowing good here. And then we'll uh, clean this bowl up, and I'm pretty sure I'll be good to go with this. So then it'll just be the sending unit. If I can't get it cleaned up, we're going to end up having to wait for the new one. It looks like things are flowing pretty well through this little filter unit. So that's awesome. I don't think we need to be worried about all this. This is not gunked up like it is by the tank there. So we'll just get her cleaned up good. Throw that new filter in and call it good. Clean this bowl up best we can. New filter on here. I'll put the gasket in there. Fits nicely. I can throw that back on and we should be Good to go in here. And I think that's good. Filter assembly complete. I'm gonna go ahead and finish getting the sending unit cleaned up and we'll maybe go check back on the tank again. See how well that's going. After I, uh, I've been driving around with it in the back of my truck for quite a bit and uh, I think things should be broke free pretty well. When the new sending unit comes in, I'm also going to be hopefully try to put some sealer in that tank. A new tank for these things is extremely expensive, so I think I'm just going to try to seal it and uh, hopefully that does the trick. We'll be good to go on the fuel system. Yeah, it looks horrible. Well, I got the tank back out of the truck here, let it ride around for a couple days. It still looks pretty bad, but I think I got all the scale and rust broke free in there uh, and flushed out. I think we're safe for now. 
And then I also got everything clean, cleared up and all the, the lines free of gunk on the sending unit. I'm gonna throw it back in the tank here and uh, get her installed back in the car. Now I just gotta <clears throat> hook the spout back up, hook the lines back up back here. And this thing uh, should be all good to go. I'll put a little fuel in it and we'll see if we're getting fuel up to the front. Hopefully she holds. I guess if there's any holes in it, we'll find out, huh? Okay, so I got my fuel lines run all the way up to here. Tanks in with some fuel in it. I think the next thing is, is uh, we get the battery hooked back up. We'll see if we're getting fuel out of here. And as soon as we know that, if we do, hopefully we do, then I can put the filter assembly back on and uh, plug her up to the carburetor. We'll see if this thing runs on its own. Our fuel pumps working. Nice. Okay, got a good amount of fuel there. I'm gonna pull that bottle off here and see what we're looking like. Not bad. Actually, that's pretty clean. All right. Dump it right, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, okay, so at this point, I feel comfortable throwing the uh, filter assembly back on here and shoving her back on and uh, Let's see real quickly before we do anything else if uh, this carb is going to actually take fuel and work like it's supposed to. And then we can, uh, we can move on to a few other things like brakes. I'm going to put that steering rag joint on yet. We'll do that. And then Hopefully we can get to the point today where we can test the uh, transmission. I do still have this thing up in the air on jack stands, so uh, I'll probably keep it on jack stands while I throw it in gear and see if it what it does, I guess. And yeah, nice. All right, I'm getting excited now. So let me go ahead and tighten all this stuff up. <clears throat> Throw the return line back on here and it comes off the top of the uh, filter bowl. I think that should be good. Let's give her another shot here. See if the float and everything is working in this thing.
There's a lot of stuff burning off this thing, and I got a lot of smoke coming out of the back end here. Wow. Hopefully that burns off. I'm sure there's stuff in those pipes like you've never seen before. But... Not sure what that was. That was kind of weird. Just had a weird pop. I'm going to have to let her sit. There's a lot of stuff burning off. Okay, so obviously she runs. Uh, just made a weird, weird pop. So uh, I'm gonna have to investigate a little bit, but I think she got some heat in her. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually probably drain the oil at this point. And uh, man, this thing runs great. There is a lot of stuff burning off of here. Uh, we got some snap crackling and popping going on here. I'm gonna have to see what's going on, but either way, she seems like she runs pretty good. Next step, I think, is uh, obviously, you know, putting some fresh oil in her, and I gotta, I gotta put some cooling in here. I didn't run her for very long, but uh, I definitely don't want to hurt this motor if I if I can uh, avoid it. So, right on. Okay, so before I forget, I'm gonna tackle this rag joint. Uh, as you can see, here's the old one. It was pretty shot. And uh, they did manage to actually have one for this car at O'Reilly's. So I picked that up. We'll go ahead and throw that in a minute. And uh, that way we have steering. Then right after that, I think I may fire this thing up back up real quick. I want to test the transmission and see if uh, we get rear wheel turnage out of this thing. Okay, so for the rag joint project, the first thing I gotta put on is a steering joint uh, on the column. Let's see if I can get that on here quick sec. Ooh, she's still kinda hot. Nice, there it goes. Maybe, maybe not. Oh, you son of a gun. There it is, perfect. Thank goodness. All together, all I gotta do is tighten everything down now, and we should have steering again. All right, so I think uh, I want to see if uh, the transmission works, so I'm just gonna fire it up real quick. I haven't changed oil yet, but I'm gonna fire it up real quick and uh, throw her in gear. She's up on jack stands. We'll see if these old tires turn, and also we can see if the brakes work at the same time. Let's give her a shot. The brake pedal actually feels pretty good. So we do got some action out of the transmission. Uh, maybe I'll recheck the fluid. Uh, might just be low, hopefully. Uh, obviously I got no brakes, so I'm gonna have to uh, check that out. I do know that when I was underneath the front, I saw one pinched brake line up there. So we're gonna have to replace that. I think that's the one that goes to the uh, driver's side front, but that's okay. You know, we'll just uh, put a new line in there and bleed it out. Either way, uh, the other the tire on the other side was turning. Here, maybe we'll try it one more time uh, while we're looking at that side.
All right, so uh, after going over what I just did, uh, I realized I didn't think it went into drive, but it did. So apparently I have gears, but uh, the throttle stuck on me and I panicked. Uh, threw into park, which I shouldn't have done. Um, but either way, transmission is working. I might just need to top the fluid off, which is okay. Hopefully I didn't hurt anything there. Uh, and obviously I gotta uh, address this whole throttle issue. But we got gears, no brakes at all. Um, and then, uh, yeah. I think now we can get on to changing and topping off fluids and, and uh, get the brakes going. Hopefully we can get this thing on the road. All right, so with uh, this, we know the tranny works now, I decided, you know what? I'm gonna put some coolant in here so I could maybe run it a little longer, uh, check the tranny, the tranny fluid level, make sure things are good there. At that point, I would drain the oil. Uh, but uh, I already started filling the coolant and I came up with another problem. And I'll show you guys that here in a minute. I have one questionable freeze plug on the driver's side and then on the passenger side above the starter. Uh, it's kind of hard to see. Actually, it's, you can't really see it, but the freeze plug right behind the starter there is, is gone. So the coolant just is coming right out of the block. That's uh, a lot less than ideal, but we'll just have to go get a couple freeze plugs and uh, fix that issue and we can continue on. Well, after I found out that freeze plug was missing, <clears throat> I looked up on the O'Reilly's website there and it looked like they had freeze plugs for this car in stock, so I went and picked a few up. There was a couple different sizes. A uh, smaller one, two bigger ones that are close, and none of them are for this car. So I went ahead and pulled the starter down there off the motor, as you can see. And lo and behold, the freeze plug was sitting right on top of the starter. What I'm going to try to do, I tried to just put it up to the hole there in the block. And it looked like it will still fit. So I think what I'm going to do is try to get that thing back in there. And hopefully we'll be back in business. Now, as you can see, this freeze plug is uh, not quite the same as what I think they normally look like, which is that. Uh, but uh, on the, I was looking at the block there, and I'll show you here in just a sec when I get down there with the light. But... Uh, there's, there's a lip on the block side, so it's a little different than normal. It's not just a press fit deal. It sits up against the lip, so I think this will work. Okay, so as you can see, this up here is right where the starter sits. And I've got that out right now. And, uh, yeah, that's where the freeze plug's supposed to be. So, that's no bueno. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just clean it up a bit and just see if I can't uh, shove that freeze plug back in. And if it's tight enough, if it's, if it's not tight, we're, we're gonna have to get a new one. But uh, hopefully it'll work uh, and uh, let's see what we can do here. So let's see, if I, technically if I, yeah, it actually, see I can't get it in there just by, with, uh, by hand, so. That means I'm going to have to punch it in, uh, which is good news because uh, they, they need to be like a press fit type deal. So that should work out fine. So I'm just going to basically clean up the surface of this area with some uh, WD-40 and, and fine grit sandpaper. Uh, that way we make sure there's no rust and, and debris in the way of, of the freeze plug. And then we'll go ahead and try to shove that puppy back in here. And hopefully she seals up for us.
All right, so I think I got her pretty well uh, cleaned up of any debris and whatnot. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put some brake cleaner. Just to kind of dry it up and actually I'm gonna get a rag and wipe it off. Oh, I think I got her cleaned up enough. I'm gonna go ahead and prep this puppy. All right, it's a little bit of an awkward angle here. Kind of hard to get the hammer in there. Ah, there we go. A small hammer does the trick. Okay, well, I think that's about all I'm going to be able to get out of that. It looks like it's fully seated in there. I'm pretty happy with that. Got the freeze plugs back in, starters back up, and while I was down there, I pulled the drain plug on the oil pan so we can get that drained out. Uh, let's go ahead and pull this oil filter, and then we can start adding fluids back in this thing. Looks like an old Napa Gold oil filter. Definitely has some uh, crusty rust on the top. But, looks like it was doing its job, so that's good. So it's still peeling it out of the bottom there while that's doing that, doing its thing. I'm gonna go ahead and get this new oil filter filled up. Put it back on the filter housing there. And, uh, and then we'll throw that drain plug back in as soon as that's finished up and, and uh, we can fill this thing up with fresh oil. Okay, let's throw this new oil filter on here. We've got her all filled up with fresh oil. All right. Filter's all the way on. Now we can throw this plug back in. Make some good headway. Plug's back on. All the oil drained out good. Let's go ahead and pull this cap off here and fill this thing up. Well, so uh, I didn't even really realize it, but I only put four quarts in so far and it's pretty much filled it up. It says capacity four quarts right on the dipstick here, but uh, I guess in my mind I thought it would take a lot more than that. I didn't start pouring this next jug in yet, so thankfully. Uh, I could probably put another quart in or half a quart and we'll be at the full line. But, uh, huh. Interesting. Okay, well, I guess that's it. Oil's changed. She's pretty well topped off. Well, I guess now would be a good time to try to add coolant to this thing again. Well, I'm just going to start filling, and uh, if anything starts dumping out of the motor again, I suppose we'll hear it, won't we? The good news is, is there's nothing leaking on the ground. Well, now that I have uh, oil and coolant taken care of, I suppose I already know i got to check, check the old brakes, so I suppose I might as well pop this off and see if we got any fluid in here. Oh my goodness. Well there is still fluid in there. Awful dirty. I think we're gonna wanna try to start fresh with that. Yeah. I think what we'll do is we'll just bleed them out of each wheel with some fresh fluid. 
and hopefully we get brakes. Like I said though, there is a pinch line on this side. I will have to replace that. Not a huge deal. We'll just throw that in, bleed them out. But maybe this is actually a good time to pull these tires off. All right, let's see what we're working with here. Start pulling these tires off. This one's got a busted stud, so we're only held on with four levers. Okay, we got the old four wheel drums. Rolls decent. Yeah, I'm gonna wanna put a new stud in there. So on the backs here, we got these skirts that gotta come off in order for us to actually pull the tire off. And there's a, a little like square, square nut in here, or rectangle. And if I, as far as I know, you just turn it counterclockwise like you're turning a, a, a nut loose. And I don't know. Yeah, there we go. And that pops the top. And it should just unclip from there. Boom. Skirts off. I'm going to keep those protected as best we can. And it'll give us access to this wheel. And this one has all the studs, but it's missing a lug nut. All right, a little bit of the same on this side. Pull this skirt off. There it is. And that pulls out just like that again. And then we can pop this out. All four tires are off. Now we can dig into the brakes. Well, I figured since we're, uh, we ended up on this tire last, let's go ahead and start with the brakes on this uh this corner here and see about getting this drum off and see what we're looking at underneath this thing well she's on there there it is Woo! there's a lot of a lot of dust in there okay well we had a little life left on the shoes and it ain't wet in here, I like that. So I don't get any leaks inside the uh, brake drum here or the on the cylinder. I think we'll go ahead and we can just bleed this one out. And I'm just gonna make my way around the four corners here, take each of the drums off just so we can get a visual on uh, what we have going on here. This one looks decent. We'll move on to the next one. Again, we got a decent amount of the brake shoe left on these, and also uh, it's still dry in the uh, cylinder on the cylinder there. So that's great to see. I'm gonna go ahead and lay this thing to the side for now, and uh, work around to the other corners. That looks pretty good. We'll do the same thing here. We'll just kind of clean her up a bit before we throw everything back on. And then we'll get ready to bleed these things. Pop this cap off and let's see what we got behind door number three. This is one that's missing a, stud, a wheel stud here. I do have new ones coming so I can replace them and any with bad threads on them. And those should be here tomorrow. 
So that's kind of why I was hoping to get this done tonight. Then leave these out. That way hopefully I can pound those bad ones out, put new ones in, and we'll be good to go. So let's go ahead and pull this off. Oh, that one's a little tighter than the other side, but not bad. Again, the inside of this one looks pretty good. We'll throw some new grease on these when we put them back on. Same here. Shoes look good. Dry. Awesome. Move on to the last wheel here. Yeah, there we go. Not bad. All right, and again, quite a bit of dust in there. And again, dry. A little bit of shoe left there. I'm good with that. All four of these corners are looking pretty good. I feel good about just cleaning things up, throwing her all back on, and hopefully we can put this puppy on the road soon. Okay, so I've got the two front drums here. I've got two studs on this one I need to knock out, and one on this one. If I get those knocked out, uh, I think I'm all ready for uh, tomorrow. Once the new studs get here, I got the rear brakes uh, all reinstalled. I've got all the bleeder screws uh, broke free, so we know we'll be able to get on that pretty easily. There's two new studs on this one, so at, at one point somebody had to do something. As you can see, a couple shiny new studs. The new studs showed up, got them pounded in, we're good to go there. Let's go ahead and get these uh, the bearings and everything greased back up, throw these things back on, and uh, get to bleeding our brakes out. So I'm just going to stuff these bearings with uh, fresh grease and then uh, we should be good to go. We'll throw these these bearings back in the, the hub there, put the hub back in the in the drum and shove her back over the shoes there. So I'm going to go ahead and do this and I'm going to show you one more thing I'm going to have to do here uh, before we before we go ahead and bleed the brakes out. I think I may have mentioned it before. There's a uh, pinched line up front here. And so I, I ended up pulling that out. I didn't feel comfortable leaving it in. And I did have a stick sitting around here with, uh, or that was about the same length. And we're gonna throw that one in its place. I'm gonna clean the old mitts off here a minute. We'll shove these hubs back in the drums and slam them back on the car. Let's go ahead and throw this first bad boy on here. Okay. Not bad. And I'll come back around and finish that up. I'm gonna go throw the other side on there a minute. The second side. And I'm going to go ahead and finish these two hubs off. Make sure these nuts are right where they need to be with the cotter pin and the cap. And then we'll go ahead and uh, take a peek at that brake line. So now that the hubs are all back on the car, the, the brake drums are all back on. There's just one more issue i got to fix before I can bleed the brakes out, and that's this line here. This line goes to the passenger side front tire. And right underneath the motor there... You can see it was uh, smashed probably when somebody was maybe taking the motor out or reinstalling it at some point. I'm not really sure. But uh, either way, there was nothing getting through there. I tried first before I took it out. I tried blowing air through there to see if I could feel it on the other side. Nothing came out. So I ended up, uh, I usually hang on to all my old brake lines or anything I buy a kit for that has extra brake lines in it. There's a whole bunch of those right here. I ended up having one that was about, uh, you know, maybe a few inches off of being exactly the same size 
uh, or length, I guess, and uh, everything else is the same on this thing. So I got this piece, I'm gonna bend it to, to uh, the shape of the one I pulled out. We'll throw it back in there and then we can get on with bleeding the brakes. Okay, so <clears throat> I got that line pretty well, the same shape as the original. I had to do a little extra loop or a couple little loop swoop and pulls over there to get it the same length. I don't know if it's gonna uh, clear everything yet, but we'll find out in a minute. But I think it looks pretty good and it should fit right in the place of, uh, of this old one here. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide underneath there, throw this puppy in, and then we'll take a little peek at it once it's in or, uh, or once I know if it's uh, a big fail. Well, as you can see, brake line made it over to this side and it clears everything pretty nicely. Runs down almost exactly where the other one went. Feel over here where this little block is. Clears everything on this side nicely. Well, now that that line's in, I think we're pretty much ready to bleed these brakes out. Well, the uh, brake bleeding was going pretty well. I got the back saw bled out, but then I moved over to the front and the master cylinder was actually pumping fluid. Once I moved to the front, I, uh, I had to pump the pedal a couple times and it was pumping fluid from the rear reservoir to the front reservoir. So there must be something messed up in the, the piston part there. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this thing off and and see if we can take a peek at it. Hopefully we can be, it'll be, you know, hopefully things look good inside there and we can just repair it. But if not, I'm gonna have to get one coming. Uh, the local O'Reilly's doesn't have one in stock, so it uh, looks like they could get one in a day or so. So let's see if we can take this off and find out what's going on in there. All right, there she is. Let's go ahead and pull her off of there. Pretty rusty and crusty, but I guess we'll just start digging in. Right, so there's a little C-clip in here that I got to pop out. Um, it's looking like I'm going to have to really dig at it, though. There's a lot of junk. A lot of junk in here. So let me see what I can do to get this out and then we can take a look at what's inside of here. Okay, so I got the ring out. And then uh, first piece that comes out is the uh, piston for the fronts, I believe that is. And then the last piece is the piston for the rears. And to be honest, it doesn't look bad. I think all I really should got to do is clean this all up good. And we should be fine. I don't see any problems here. If all else fails, I got to get a new master cylinder, but figured it was worth a shot. I'm going to clean out the inside of, of uh, the reservoir here and make sure it's all good to go. And then we'll shove everything back in it and we'll go give it another shot in the car. So I got it pretty well back together. I think I'm gonna just I put a little bit of fluid in there I'm gonna try to bench test it or bench uh, bleed it <clears throat> And that will let me know that it's working or not and let's see They may be stuck getting a new uh, master cylinder. All right, well, I've been pumping on this thing for a little bit, trying to bench bleed it, and I'm still not getting any pressure out of this uh, rear reservoir here. It's just not wanting to do it. So I already caved and called O'Reilly's, and uh, they, got, they got one on the way. It'll be here tomorrow. So I'm gonna mess with it a little more tonight, but I don't think I'm gonna get any, make any headway here. So I'll probably just go pick up that new one tomorrow and uh, hopefully we can get this thing on the road this weekend. Well, I figure since I'm waiting on the brake master cylinder, 
And I got a little bit of time left today. Why don't I go ahead and replace on these old worn out spark plug wires? And then uh, possibly maybe we'll uh, fire this puppy up and figure out that stick and throttle real quick. And then at the same time, I'm thinking I could also check to make sure my alternator's charging. I never did check that. So if we could do those three things yet tonight, I think uh, that only just leaves the brakes. Battery cable's on. And see if we can't fire it up and check that uh, throttle. Okay. Might need a little juice there. I got tons of juice in the battery and the starter seems to just be skipping. So I ended up pulling the starter down and checked everything out, threw it back up, still got just clicking. And then, you know, I was thinking, I was like, you know, this kind of seems like, like a, a bad ground deal because he's got a ground strap going from the frame or the guy that had this before me had a ground strap going from the frame uh to the starter well i didn't really it was working before so i didn't really i was planning on replacing these earlier the ground from the battery is just going to the core support here and then there's another one going down below somewhere that i didn't really chase down i had another ground cable sitting on the shelf here so i just threw it on real quick put it right on the motor and i'm going to tell you what this thing turns over like a champ now so it looks like it was just a ground issue. Let's go give her another shot. I did end up spraying down the linkage on the carb there and it loosened it up quite a bit. Seems like it's idling lower now too. I, I forgot to mention or I forgot to say that I was gonna adjust that as well. But it seems like it's idling lower. Uh, it returns pretty good now. about that but uh, apparently I got a good new a new alternator as well not a huge deal this thing should be roadworthy real soon so idles good throttles throttles not sticking anymore seems like it's firing an all eight which is awesome still pumping fuel good and, and the fuel is super clean coming in that's awesome Let's see, what else do I gotta do? I got the new plug wires on. Other than that, once I get that master cylinder, I can bleed the brakes, I'll get a new alternator on here, and this thing is gonna be ready to go. The next day, I just went and picked up my new master cylinder for the brakes there. I wasn't able to find an alternator uh, anywhere locally. It would've probably took a while, they'd have to order it in. Uh, so, because of that, I thought, you know, I'm gonna mess around with this one a little bit. And I ended up putting a ground wire to the back of the case here and messed around with it a little bit, just doing a few different things. And due to the fact that this is a one wire alternator, apparently they don't charge or, or excite themselves uh, at a low RPM. So I fired it back up earlier and I 
ran the throttle up probably to, I don't know, 1500 RPMs. And not until I did that did it start charging and it went all the way up to 14 and a half volts at that point. So the alternator is in fact working, which is great. Uh, and I guess that means all I gotta do is bleed the brakes. So let's get right to it. So when I bench bleed a brake master cylinder, I personally just like to do it in the car. Uh, I just hook up my two little hoses over here and feed them into there. And all I gotta do is push the brake pedal, bleeds out the air. And then once that's done, I'll hook the lines back up and we'll, we'll bleed out each, each corner. <clears throat> but I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing installed here, get it bolted up to the, the booster here. And we'll fill her up, put those lines in and get to bench bleeding this thing. Okay, heading over to pump the pedal. Well, that's odd. I'm not getting nothing out of these things. All right, well, I'm going to have to pull her back out. I'm going to have to uh, make sure the... <clears throat> I'm going to have to make sure the plunger on the inside is the same depth as the old one, I guess. Make sure the pin is contacting the, the bottom of it there. Well, this is interesting. My little C-clip that's supposed to be right on the little edge here went in with the plunger. So I'm going to have to dig that back out and hopefully this uh, everything pops back out the way it should. That's kind of weird. I ain't never seen nothing like it. Sure hope that didn't wreck nothing. Yeah, it popped back out. I'm not really sure why it pushed in like that. I'm going to go ahead and just bench bleed it here a minute <clears throat> and see if that makes a dip. Well, that makes a huge dip. How about that? Well, I sure hope that C-clip doesn't pop back in when I throw it back in the car now. Well, I think we're all bench bled. I'm going to go take a look at what I got going on in the car real quick make sure nothing's catching. Yeah, I don't see how anything would have caught that. It's kind of weird. I mean, it seems like it's in there pretty good. Well, let's give it another shot. Uh-oh. Feels like it may have went all the way in again. I'm not really sure what the dealio is here. And it's not as much of a ridge as the as the old one. I'm not really sure. All I know is that's not great. I definitely don't like that. Huh. I think I might just take this old clip out of that one. Throw it in here and see if that makes a diff. I'm wondering if these two little ears on this one are something in the car is hitting those and just pushing it in there. There we go. Got that one out. Let's see if we can swap them out here. Got that one out. And see if we can't pop this one in. Alright, yeah. Let's give that a shot. Okay, let's go give her another shot. Yes, I think it worked. All right, so that time I was getting, I could see fluid moving through the entire stroke of, uh, of the pedal every time. So I'm pretty confident that, that this new, or the old clip isn't popping in like the new one was. I'm gonna go ahead and pop these lines off, put the, the brake lines back on, and we should be able to start bleeding each corner. All right, let's try this again. Pedal feels good. I'm gonna do a couple pumps. And I'm gonna go check the levels, see if we're uh, we're using fluid. Oh 
I ran into a little bit of an issue on the front here. I was bleeding the brakes, I got the back split out again, just like I did with the old master cylinder. And I just cannot get fluid out of the front uh, corners here. And I already took the other side off here, but it, it appears that my flex lines on the fronts are plugged. It just will not let any fluid past them and out the bleeder. I, I checked the lines and all that all the way through to the other side, and those are all clear. Um, and check the little bleeder, that's clear. Everything's clear, but I can't get fluid through the flex line here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this one off as well. And then I'm gonna have to take both of these lines, either get new ones or uh, try to flush them out, clear them out. And it seems like a whole bunch of gunk just got built up in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this one off and uh, hopefully that will fix our issue here. So let's see here. These things do not like to break free very easily. And it actually did. All right, so we'll pull this line off here. And I already got fluid dripping out of that, as you can see. So now, basically, I just got to pull this off of the of here. Oh. Now, let's see if we can demonstrate here. Just picked up new uh, front brake lines there, or brake hoses. And I also grabbed another low beam headlight for the passenger side over there, the one that was dim. Let's go ahead and throw these puppies on and see if we can finally get these brakes bled. Boy, I sure hope this works. I mean, this is pretty much the last piece to the puzzle here, so if we get the brakes working, this car is pretty much ready to hit the road. Okay, that side's on and looking pretty darn good. I'll go snag the other side on there a minute. Well, with that, I think and I hope we may be good to go on our brake bleeding here. So let's give her another shot. Yeah, I think it's working. Oh yeah, the brakes feel, they feel good. Nice and firm. So I think the next test I'll have to do is just fire it up. Once the brake booster is on, back into the brake booster. Uh, then we'll see if this pedal stays firm. Also when I throw it in gear, if it stops the, uh, the wheels from turning. I think I'm gonna try to do that real quick, that way I know for sure. And that way we can throw the wheels back on and feel good about it. Okay, we're going to fire it up and do the transmission test again. Check it out, but 
Wow. Yep, she, she burst on me. So obviously, I got fluid all over the ground back here. This is the uh, passenger rear tire. You can see it's all wet. The exhaust is all wet here. And uh, I think this line that comes from, from right here, and it just goes straight over to the, the wheel here. Let's see if I can get a clear view. Oh, it's hard, hard to see. But it goes right up to here. Uh, that line burst, I'm guessing it's going to be right about there-ish. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that off and uh, hopefully I can make or redo that line somehow to get this thing going. Otherwise, back to O'Reilly as we go. I got the broken line out here. Went back to the brake line reserve. And I have this one, but uh, it's missing the end on this side, which is fine. It's the same size as the one that came out. Uh, I do have both ends on there, or both of the uh, screw ends on there. So I marked out where the length was. I, I just kind of followed the bends and whatnot. I'm going to cut it right here with my little brake line cutting tool. And then I, I have this I have this flaring tool, which I don't really like to use because I suck at it. But I think I'm just going to go ahead and try to. Uh, I think I'm just going to go ahead and try to use this, make a flared end, bend this to what the original looked like, roughly, and throw her back on. This is a pretty new line, so shouldn't have any problems with that. Well. My flare ain't perfect, but I think it'll work. So we're gonna give her a shot. New brake line installed. Okay, brake brakes are uh, bled back out. Let's give her another go. But as far as I could tell, it was everything was going good training wise. Uh, seemed like it wasn't stopping it with the brakes. But when I put it in reverse, I could hit the brakes and throw it in park, and it seemed fine. So I'm gonna have to go over what the uh, camera was showing here, and then we'll circle back around. After going over uh, the little clip of checking the rear brakes there, it appears that maybe they were working, so I'm just going to roll with that. Now, uh, there's just a few little touch-up things i got to do before we can actually throw the tires back on take this thing out. And one of those is an air cleaner. Now, I bought this fancy Edelbrock air cleaner, except for the opening was way too big for the carb that's on here. So I did order up this little adapter that brings it from the, uh, the size of the carb, the diameter of the top there, to the size of the opening of the air cleaner so we can use it. Now, it's all fine and dandy except for I also, uh, when I put the lid on, it doesn't, the stud doesn't go up tall enough, so I'm going to have to flip the lid over and just mount her upside down, and that will give me just enough to put the little wing nut on, and I'm okay with that. I'm just going to run like that for now. You know, it's not the best, but it'll do. And the other thing I picked up, like I said earlier, was this uh, extra headlight for the passenger side over here. I'm going to go ahead and put that in, and that way, if we're driving around in the dark, uh, we should be able to see what we're doing. I know we had a good light over here, so 
As soon as I get this in, we'll throw all the wheels back on and we'll test out to make sure the brakes actually work on the ground. Okay, so that's quite a bit bigger than what I got in there, so we're not going to be able to use that. Looks like it's back to O'Reilly's for something else. Maybe I'll have to go ahead and take that out and bring it in with me. So I guess we're on to the part where we throw the wheels back on. You can tell this is a brand new scent tree because of the uh, extreme elasticity of the elastic there. All right, let's go see what this thing does. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you on the next one.